Hey, what's up guys? It's Patrick here bringing you guys a brand new video on a pretty hot topic and that is cheating and the number one spot in Clash of Clans. So the new maintenance break that came out today had to deal with the fact that people were bypassing the personal break feature. If you guys looked at the number one player, he hadn't moved in trophies for almost, I think, three weeks, at least over two weeks, but he hadn't attacked, he hadn't been attacked. People were wondering what was going on, so Supercell just implemented a hotfix, and rather than just talking about that, I thought I would sort of just talk about the history of the number one spot, the history of cheating methods in Clash of Clans, and why you really should not even care about the Champions League because it is so broken and it's a complete joke. So, let's go ahead and start it off. Let's flash back to 2012. I believe in September, that's when I started playing the game, and during this time, you actually could only get to Town Hall 8, so there was a lot of chaos in the top position. Uh, people actually really didn't care too much about the top players because, to be honest, Clash of Clans hadn't blown up yet. Clash of Clans really didn't explode till around December or January, and I think around maybe November uh, to December, the first real number one player emerged, and his name was Shady. He actually held the spot for a pretty good amount of time. Uh, it really wasn't too well documented. I can't tell you guys if Shady was cheating or not. I don't have any evidence of that, and I'm not just going to throw dirt at him. So I'm just going to assume that he was a clean number one player. I think he had around 3,850 trophies, and I think he was truly the first real number one player that people recognized. All right, so in January, I believe, of 2013, George Yao came and took the throne. Clash of Clans actually did a post about how he hit 4,000 trophies. And this is when the sort of cheat, cheating, I guess, cheap shield thing sort of started to arise. And let's just go ahead and talk, start talking about cheap shielding. So what cheap shielding is, is say I'm the number one player in Clash of Clans. I'm going to have a deal with my clan as well as with other clans to where if people attack me, all they're going to do is take 40%, they're going to intentionally lose, and I'm going to get a free 12-hour shield, as well as I'm not going to lose any trophies. So people may or may not leave their clan while they do this. I know George Yao consistently moved clans to join his Twitter clan. There was like a ton of other clans that they joined. But in this, they were masking the fact that they were leaving clans to get their own clanmates to attack them and give them cheap shields. In fact, George Yao admitted that he played over five accounts at a single time, five high-level accounts, and all he would do is sit in the number one spot, have his iPad on his left, his iPad on his right, he would attack himself from one of his own accounts, give himself a free shield, and at that point, he could never be touched at the top. So let's go ahead and do an analogy, because everyone loves analogies, but I'm going to say the number one spot is like a never-ending marathon. Let's say George Yao is in first place. You've been training extremely hard to reach him. You've worked up your way through the Champions League, aka through the race. You're working really hard. You're spending gems, aka training harder. And by the time you get to that top five spot, you see George Yao and he's right there. But for some reason, there's an invisible wall behind him. You can never pass him. You have no chance of passing him no matter how hard you try. No matter how much you want to pass him, you will never pass him because he has this invisible shield, either attacking himself to give him this invisible shield or his clanmates attacking him to give him this invisible shield. Pretty much, it is impossible for you to ever, ever, ever get the number one spot, and that's it. No matter how hard you've trained, how much you love this marathon and you want to run it, you will never have the chance to win just because someone has two iPads, they can attack themselves, and that's it. That, that's literally the only chance. So, while some people may defend cheap shields, personally, I think it's disgusting that you can just attack yourself. And it's totally against the ethics of the game. I think when Supercell created the game, they wanted everyone to be able to be attacked at one point instead of just sitting there and having free shields and not giving fair play. Overall, I have a huge opinion on cheap shields, but I'll save you guys the time. And that was mainly what George Yao did to to keep his same spot. So at this point, you sort of started to see an ego come with the number one player. When George Yao retired, he equated himself to Michael Jordan, although he was just abusing game mechanics the whole time. And yeah, that was sort of his legacy. So let's go ahead and go to the next player. And this was Dream, I believe was his name. And he was a pretty recent top player. Um, he did an interview with another Clash of Clans YouTuber. During this interview, I don't know why you'd say this out loud, he admitted to using an assisted touch machine to stay online indefinitely. 
So I'm going to put one on your screen right now. You can see what it does. And the fact that people are using machines to keep themselves in the top spots is absolutely ridiculous. If you're a player like I am, when I went to the top 200, you're working hard, you're staying online to do this. The fact that someone's using a machine built of Legos to keep themselves online indefinitely is absolutely crazy. So Supercell did actually put in a patch to help fix this. They put in a personal break feature to where every like eight hours it would log you off for a couple minutes. Um, but still, the fact that you can stay on for eight hours is crazy just because you have a Lego or something touching the sheen. It was also accused that Dream used cheap shields, but again, that was sort of the norm, not making it right, but yeah. All right, let's go ahead and go to the player right now, and that's Mohamed Meher. I don't even know how to pronounce it, but... During this period, he also did another interview with the Clash of Clans YouTuber. During this, he said that he shared his account with another person, which I think is totally wrong. The fact that he would just stay online forever and when he went to bed, he'd have someone else play it. Um, personally, I think that that's sort of unethical that, again, you're not using this account by yourself. You're having someone else help be you beat the system, tap the machine, and keep you online. But recently, the whole thing with the number one player now is the fact that he stayed at the same trophy count for three weeks. So people were sort of wondering what was going on. I know I mentioned it in the most recent video. And it came out that I actually talked to one of the Supercell employees and he told me that people were staying online for over 24 hours using an iMod hack. So what this hack allowed people to do is get around the personal break feature to the point where they would stay online forever. So it's not completely known if he was using this iMod hack to stay online forever, but the fact that he was at 4,521 4, trophies for over two weeks before this hit, as well as right when the patch came out, he dropped 40 trophies. I guess I can leave you guys to take your conclusions from there. Other cheating tactics that have gone on while Clash of Clans has been around is the sandbox, mo sandbox mode where pretty much people can attack any base they want. And why that sounds like a great feature, say if I'm the number one player in Clash of Clans and I know the number two player is on my revenge list, I can use this sandbox feature to pinpoint his base. I can attack it 30 times. I can get the perfect attack strategy with a sandbox mode to where none of my attacks count. And then when I attack him, when it actually counts for trophies, I'm going to absolutely destroy his pace. And top players have said that they use this mode all the time, as well as there's plenty of other iMod hacks. Personally, I have never looked at the list. I don't condone cheating, but yeah, cheating is very, very rampant. So I guess the only question I have would be why? Why do people spend $10,000 on this game? Why do people cheat in this game just to have this one little number one spot to have these little pixelated trophies. I guess coming from me, that might be weird because I make Clash of Clans videos. You guys can call me a loser if you want, but I have a good time because I help people out and I give people tips and tricks and I build a community. But these people, they're literally just cheating and wasting all this time for a number one spot in a video game that doesn't even matter. I just don't understand it. I don't understand why people just can't play fairly, play by the rules, because I feel like they'd feel a lot better about themselves if they don't have to be grimy and work just to get this number one spot by cheating. But anyways, something that someone very wise told me is don't bring up a problem if you don't have any fixes to it. So I thought I would throw some fixes to the end of this video to help improve the Champions League. Personally, I'm not the smartest guy. I don't I don't have the best ideas when it comes to fixing stuff, but there are plenty of brilliant minds on the forums and plenty of people who have made great ideas to the Champions League that haven't gone fixed. I know that Supercell is doing their best job trying to fix the Champions League as it is, but currently it is a mess. It has been a mess for the last year and a half, and they definitely have to improve it. I know that they just released this maintenance break, but when people are doing these egregious errors, they need to hold people accountable. So let's go ahead and get to the first thing that should be fixed. First of all, no more 40% shield. The fact that someone can attack you, get to 40%, actually give you a free shield and you get to keep your trophies is crazy. You need to get rid of the 40% shield in the Champions League. It's hard to believe this has been around for over a year and Supercell has not fixed it. So please implement that as soon as possible. Number two, there needs to be very, or there needs to be way stricter rules when it comes to breaking the rules, I guess. There needs to be stricter rules when it comes to breaking the rules. There needs to be absolute, absolutely no sh sh account sharing in the Champions League, absolutely no at assisted touch, absolutely no iMod hacks, or else you face the risk of getting banned. Supercell actually has this data. They know when people are online for 24 hours or longer. 
I know that they make a lot of money off this people, but if they find people in this offense, they should give them a warning, maybe drop them like 500 trophies, and then if they break the rules again, they should just straight up ban them. There's no reason for them not to do this. I know that they want to make money, but to be ethical and to hold yourself accountable, you need to make sure you're keeping control of these top players. And yeah, it's pretty obvious. These people are admitting in interviews that they are cheating. They are posting videos online of themselves cheating. I don't know what other grounds there are to kick these people out of the game. It's crazy. And then the final thing to help fix the Champions League is for people to stop idolizing these players. Instead of idolizing these players for being the number one players, you guys should instead, I guess, idolize Supercell for making a great game. There's no reason to interview these players on YouTube for being scummy, for cheating, to using all these different methods to be the number one spot, when in reality, they're creating invisible force fields so people can never attack them. So don't give them fame. Don't give them fortune. Uh, yeah, that's all I have to say about it. All right, guys. That's going to wrap it up for this video. I hope you enjoyed this rant. We're going on about 11 minutes. If you guys have any opinions on them, feel free to drop them in the comment section below. I'm sure some people won't agree. Some people will agree. Uh, but yeah, that's going to do it. I hope you enjoyed it. See you later. Peace.